In this video presentation, we will see about the structure of the bacteria and the different structural components present in the bacteria, like the bacterial capsule, the cell wall, the plasma membrane, the periplasm, the cytoplasm, the nucleoid, and their functions. Some bacterial species is surrounded by a viscous gelatinous material. This material is termed as the glycol calyx. This is also commonly referred as the capsule or the slime layer. This material lies outside the cell wall. This capsule is usually made up of the polysaccharide. The example, the Klebsiella pneumoniae. But occasionally, this capsule is made up of the polypeptide, the example, Bacillus anthracis. And by the hyaluronic acid, the example, Streptococcus. The bacterial glycocalyx. This glycocalyx material can be present in two ways. It can be well organized and firmly attached to the bacterial cell wall. Next, it can be the diffuse, unorganized, and loosely attached to the bacterial cell wall. When they are well organized and firmly attached, it is referred as the capsule. When they are diffuse, unorganized, and loosely attached, it is referred as the slime layer. These capsules are firmly attached, so they are not easily washed off. But the slime layer are loosely attached, so they are easily washed off. This is the difference in the terms of the capsule and the slime layer. The important roles of this bacterial glycocalyx are number one, it confers the anti phagocytic property. Next, this is one of the important virulence factor. Next, it helps in the adhesion of the bacteria to the host cells. Fourth, it supplies the nutrition during adverse conditions. Next, it provides the protection of the bacteria from the dehydration. Then, it prevents the migration of the nutrients from the bacteria. Lastly, it forms the films on the inert surface, which is popularly referred as the biofilm. These are the important roles and functions of the bacterial glycocalyx. The next structure, the cell wall. This structure is positioned between the capsule and the plasma membrane. The cell wall is a rigid structure. This confers the shape to the bacterium. There are permeable and are responsible for the transport of substances either by the simple diffusion or by the complex transport systems. The important functions of cell wall is to protect the contents of the cell from the adverse conditions and to prevent the bacteria from rupturing when there is variation in osmotic conditions. Chemically, the major component that makes the cell wall is the peptidoglycan. This peptidoglycan is composed of the N-acetyl muramic acid, abbreviated as NAM, and the N-acetyl glucosamine, abbreviated as NAG. These two are the disaccharide, which is linked to the polypeptide chain, consisting of the amino acids like the L-alanine, the D-glutamic acid, the L-lysine, and the D-alanine. In the place of the L-lysine, Sometimes, the diaminopamelic acid will be present. This is the monomeric unit of the peptidoglycan. This monomers are arranged in continuous as rho by alternating the N-acetyl muramic acid and the N-acetyl glucosamine molecules to form the disaccharide polymer. These disaccharide polymers are arranged in rows which are linked to each other by the penta glycine crosslink between the L-lysine and the D-alanine. These disaccharide polymers are arranged in many rows which are linked to each other by the pentaglycine crosslink to form a carbohydrate backbone. There may be 10 to 65 rows to form this carbohydrate backbone. This form the complex structure, that is, the cell wall, of the bacteria. The thickness, and, the chemical composition, of the cell wall, varies, between, 
the gram-positive bacteria, and the gram-negative bacteria. The cell wall. The cell wall of the gram-positive bacteria is made up of many layers of peptidoglycan that form a thick and the rigid structure. In addition to the peptidoglycan, the cell wall of the gram-positive bacteria also contain the tecoic acid. This tecoic acid is responsible for regulating the movement of the cations in and out of the cells. Next, they prevent the cell lysis when cells at low pH. And lastly, it provides antigenic character to the bacteria. In contrast, the cell wall of the gram-negative bacteria is a thin structure. Unlike the gram-positive bacteria, this cell wall do not contain the tecoic acid, and it is made up of less amount of the peptidoglycan. In addition to the peptidoglycan layer, the gram-negative bacteria also contain another layer called the outer membrane. This outer membrane contain the lipopolysaccharide, the LPS. This lipopolysaccharide is also referred as the endotoxin. This is one of the important virulence factor of the gram-negative bacteria. This lipopolysaccharide is a complex molecule consisting of number one, the lipid A. Next, the core polysaccharide. And lastly, the O polysaccharide or the O antigen. The thickness and the chemical composition of the cell wall varies between the gram positive bacteria and the gram negative bacteria. So, the cellular contents of the gram negative bacteria is protected by the multi layered structure consisting of the plasma membrane, the cell wall, and the outer membrane. Whereas, the cellular contents of the gram positive bacteria is protected by the plasma membrane and the cell wall. Once these bacteria are treated with the lysozyme, it causes the damage to the cell wall. As a result of the damage to the cell wall by the lysozyme, the gram positive bacteria loses the cell wall, but still it is surrounded by the plasma membrane and they can carry out their metabolism. Such structures are referred as the protoplast. The damage to the cell wall of the gram-negative bacteria caused by lysozyme is not as extensive as the gram-positive bacteria. The gram-negative bacteria retains the layer of the outer membrane and the plasma membrane. Such structures are referred as the spiroplast. The next structure, the plasma membrane. It is also referred as the cytoplasmic membrane. It is a thin structure lying inside the cell wall. This covers and protects the cytoplasm of the cell. This plasma membrane is a lipid bilayer. This is also referred as the phospholipid bilayer. It is composed of the hydrophilic phosphate head and the hydrophobic tail containing two fatty acid chains. These phospholipid molecules are arranged in row to form the layer. So, two layers are arranged in parallel to each other to form the phospholipid bilayer. Here, the hydrophilic heads are towards the extracellular and towards the cytoplasm, whereas the hydrophobic tails are away from the extracellular and the cytoplasm. The sterols that are normally present in the eukaryotic cells are absent here. These phospholipid molecules are arranged as the flat sheet that forms a continuous barrier around the cell. This creates a permeable barrier between the extracellular and the cytoplasm. So, in bacteria, it is a thin structure lying inside the cell wall. This covers and protects the cytoplasm of the bacterial cell. Next structure, the periplasm, also referred as the periplasmic space. In gram negative bacteria, the cellular contents are protected by the multi layered structure consisting of the plasma membrane, the cell wall, and 
the outer membrane. Here, in gram-negative bacteria, the periplasm, is, the space, between, the outer membrane, and, the plasma membrane. Whereas, in gram-positive bacteria, the cellular contents, are protected, by, the plasma membrane, and, the cell wall. Here, in gram-positive bacteria, the periplasm, is, the space, between, the plasma membrane, and, the cell wall. The next component, the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm, is, enclosed inside, and, protected by, the plasma membrane. The 80%, of, the cytoplasm, is, composed of, the water. The liquid component, of the cytoplasm, is referred as, the cytosol. The contents of cytoplasm, include, the nucleic acids, the DNA, and, the RNA. The enzymes, the amino acids, the carbohydrates, the lipids, and, the inorganic ions. Besides these, many inclusion bodies, with specific functions, are also present. The cytoplasm, is, the site for, the bacterial metabolism. The next structure, the nucleoid. In contrast, to, the eukaryotic cells, the term, nucleus, cannot be used, for the bacteria. Because, the nuclear membrane, that separates, the nucleus from the cytoplasm, is absent. Here, the genetic material, inside the bacterial cell, is referred as, the nucleoid. Since, the bacterial chromosome, do not have, a nuclear membrane, it is also referred as, the naked DNA. Unlike, the eukaryotic cells, here, the bacterial chromosome, are, haploid. There are, circular. And, they are, supercoiled structure. With this, we are coming to the end of, the part 1 lecture on, the structure of, the bacteria. The schematic illustration of, the structure of the bacterial cell, is available as, the downloadable link, in the below YouTube description. In next video presentation, we will see about, the other structural components present, in the bacteria. Stay tuned, to this YouTube channel. Hope, the lecture is, informative, and, useful. Thank you.